Barnes & Noble, one of the top three e-reader manufacturers in the world. The past five years has been difficult for Barnes & Noble, trying desperately to land on an identity that made them so popular in the first place. They have finally rediscovered that identity with the Barnes & Noble Nook Glowlight 4 recently released. This is a follow-up to that device, the 4E. It is a more economical entry into their lineup at only $119 making it not only one of the cheapest e-readers Barnes & Noble has ever produced, but one of the cheapest e-readers you can buy today. In terms of looks, it's 100% identical to the 4 in every conceivable way. So what does the $30 discount get you? Or what do you lose, we should ask? The new Glowlight 4 has a 300 ppi screen, whereas the 4E runs a 212 ppi screen. One of the biggest features they've taken away from the 4E is the addition of warm light. Although you do still have the glow light, you can't change the color temperature. Also, they've reduced the overall storage capacity from 32 gigs down to 8 gigs. And of course, the price is different at $119 versus $149. We'll try not to say this too many times, but the UI and the build quality and all of the buttons and everything is the exact same as the Glowlight 4. But with that aside, let's check out some of the differences as we showed you on the chalkboard. So if you tap the top now, you do have only the main Glowlight bar. And you might be thinking, well, go to all settings and then click on Glowlight and see what you can find. If you do that, you still only get the single brightness bar. There is no warm lighting, there's no way to get warm lighting, and that's because there's no LEDs that have the amber light. As for the home screen itself, you get this nice carousel that you can move left and right with your finger or you can actually use the buttons on the side. You know, that is one of the coolest things about this, the tactile feel of using those buttons and their fingernail style, which means they curl over to the side. They're just a joy to use. They're so snappy and they're so responsive. Absolutely love it. On the bottom here, you get things like the store, your library and Barnes & Noble readouts. This is kind of like a little tiny community and it's kind of the equivalent of Amazon's Goodreads kind of thing. Amazon has Goodreads, they don't have readouts, vice versa. Here you can read little blogs, excerpts, and serial reads as well. If you go over here, you can start reading or read past titles, and it'll tell you when they run out. So this one, for example, is good till the 30th of June, and then it will be gone. The reading experience is solid. It is very, very solid. Why that is, is because Barnes & Noble is one of the top three for a reason. The reading experience is spot on. And you know, they have a little bit of a hidden A2 mode, uncontrollably that is. So for example, you can turn pages by swiping, tapping, or pressing the buttons. If you press and hold, if you look at the bottom here, you're whipping through the book at lightning speed. And what that's actually doing is putting it in a faux A2 mode in order to dilute the image, but speed everything up in the process. And that is really cool when you want to do quick nav because it does allow you to jump very quickly through the book without having to go to the navigation. Although you can do the navigation by pressing in the middle, you have the nav bar down below, and you have multiple ways to change your font. You can press font up and down, you can choose the font style as well, and you can choose the margins, line spacing, and justification. Everything changes live in the background without the menu actually going away. Pressing the top right corner of any page will bookmark your page, so when you're done reading for the day, simply bookmark it and go to sleep and pick it up the next day. You also have three dots here for different things like add bookmark, jump to page, find and book, view details, and you can click here to go to the table of contents, in which case you can click on something and it will go right over there. They even give you a little bit of a layout here with some tabs with different annotations, bookmarks, and lookups. It's not super extensive, but it's the bare necessities of what you want on your reading experience without being too hunkered down with different effects and overlays. You do have a couple different ways to do annotations, look up in dictionary, and you can even copy the text and paste it somewhere else. Going in a little bit of a different direction this time, because we already showed you PDFs on the Nook Glowlight 4, is magazines. Let's look at a magazine downloaded and purchased from Barnes & Noble. What they do is kind of gives you an approach like an article mode meets reflow. So as you go along, you're going to get the lead in, you're going to get the headers, and then it goes into more of a book style experience. For example, 
here's everything esquire they show the date they show you can actually click on next article and jump over to it etc you actually go into more of a book layout so they strip away all the images outside of just the initial image and a couple ones midway through and then they really just give you this ebook experience and this can be really good to really get away from that messy catalog-esque magazine layout and go with something that is more suited with a small screen e-reader and that's why this time we're not showing you pdfs because when we do we're just say oh it's too small you gotta zoom in and those are all realities and that's why they give you this already pre-reflowed version because this is a smaller e-reader, manga is going to be a little bit more troublesome. Reason being that manga really isn't ever this small. An actual manga, if you buy it, would not be the size of a business card once formatted on the screen. That's really not what you'll find anywhere in North America with graphic novels, old school comic books, or even Japanese convenience stores manga selection it'll never be this small it is high quality because of the pixel dense screen it is a very small screen so naturally it's just a lot more densified it looks all right it's very fast it's snappy the contrast is great and it's formatted properly but the lack of overall screen real estate will hurt you a little bit in the end although it can do it the store is laid out wonderfully everything is very easy to understand and it's kind of really cool the way they have this carousel in the middle and they allow you to use the page turn buttons again they're integrated everywhere to actually go down and up the page respectively so for example when you're at the top of the page here it actually says explore more if you go down it shows you how many more kind of sections there are so I can go down and down and down till I hit the bottom of the list this is really cool because the fact that they integrate these on pretty much every part of the e-reader really means that they don't go to waste Clicking on something like this, which is a very scary gentleman, you do get your buying decision, you get your free sample. Clicking on free sample will automatically download it to your homepage. You can look at customer reviews, editorial reviews, and of course more like this. The overall maximum intensity of the screen is great. There's nothing wrong with the distribution. In fact, e-readers have come a long way from actually being frontlit to having a gel layer illuminated, thus giving you the overall look of a glow light being displayed either from the back or the front. It's not really. It's an illuminated gel layer. So that's how it's so easily distributed rather than having all these heavy dark spots and white spots. So that's all that's all perfectly fine the downside is that yeah when you take that $30 discount into buying the E from the 4 you lose the ability to change the color temperature and if you didn't see at the beginning of the video what that means is you only have glow light you actually don't have warm light anymore meaning you're just dealing with the white almost blue LEDs you can find a little bit of an even ground like that but overall it does hurt it a little bit not having the warm light but you get what you pay for and that's the beauty of having this entry level is that if you don't want it you're not forced to buy it essentially what the glow light 4 did for Barnes & Noble is put them back on their feet the 4e simply adds to that offering a completely different price point, thus allowing for more people the ability to purchase a Nook. Although some of the features have been downgraded on the E, that low price point is somehow just a little too hard to ignore. For GoodyReader.com, this is Peter.